In this video I want to show you how to make anything from anything in alchemy. I'm going to talk a bit fast, which is difficult for me, um, but uh, that allows me to show some different ideas and um, go to, through various stages of ideas and sound design. So the first thing I want to do is I want to import a new audio file. And the audio file itself doesn't matter that much. Um, it would be cool to have an audio file with some sort of variation in there so we can um, so we can choose multiple multiple positions in that file. I'll show that in a minute. So let's go for a loop, perhaps a melodic loop. I like that because that's an more of an acoustic sound. Um, it's not very long, but I'll, I can live with that for now. Um, I'll go to the additive mode, which is important. I almost forgot to mention that. And um, I make sure the mapping is set to pitch. And then we hit import. It's gonna be quite fast because it's a short sound. And now in additive mode, what happens, it, um, it throws away the audio file right away. So you don't have to worry about sampling issues or copyright issues. Um, but what it does, it, it rebuilds the sound from sine waves alone, something that uh, Joseph Fourier came up with, a uh, French, French dude, and he said, hey, guys, every sound can be made out of sine waves. Um, this is what, what alchemy does. So here are your partials, um, the partials of the original sound, and it's just sine waves, and if you add enough sine waves in the right combination, at the right volume, at the right tuning, at the right panning, um, phase not so much, but if you do all that stuff, then you can um, get something that is very close to the original sound. Now, now I'm playing it a bit lower, so it's not gonna... Alright, well, it's not... And this is a complex sound, because we have a lot of pitch changes in there, and it's just a weird instrument in general. But it did a pretty damn good job. So um, now the speed knob right here is set to 100%, which, which means that it's going to play it back at the original speed. I don't want that. I want to freeze this. So when I freeze this, it's going to be um, fixed at the very first position in the sample, on the first sample. And with that second sample, I mean uh, a, a sample that a longer sample is made out of. Like, um, uh, I, I talk myself into a corner right there, but uh, every recorded sound is made out of very small snippets, which you also call samples. Very confusing. So this is now frozen at the very first point in this audio file, I'll just say. So now with the position knob, we can scroll through this file and we can choose for interesting, interesting points or interesting positions in that file. Pretty cool, right? So um, that is the, the first uh, thing we want to set up. We want to freeze this sound. Um, if we want to, we can now tempo sync it by um, modulating this with an LFO, which is synced to your tempo. Um, I'm not gonna do it right now because I want to show something else. So here we have the harmonic controls and these, these four knobs are basically controlling um, these partials. So we have the fundamental, which is only changing the, the relationship between the very first partial um, otherwise known as your root. Uh, we have the octaves, so that's that's raising every 12th partial, uh, if I say that correctly, I think I do. Um, odd and even partials and fifths. So if we mess around with this, we can get a lot of variation on this sound. Um, if I set the fundamental to 100%, it gets very quiet, which means that there's little fundamental to speak of in this sound. Um, what I could do is add a little bit more of a fundamental there. And now we hear it, it's very low. Um, and we can mess with the octaves. That's all, uh, that's all pretty good. But now what I want to do is I want to change this mode to uh, a more complex wave. So with the sine wave, you're gonna get the sound that you inputted. Um, but since other waves, um, have other harmonic, like sine wave is, is a very unique waveform. It doesn't have anything. Um, therefore, it's a very good building block of sound because it's, it has no color whatsoever. Uh, to quickly demonstrate that, if I'll go for a sine right here, basic sine, uh, I'll do that in a new oscillator. And I'll solo that oscillator. There you can see that is our one, our one tone. If I choose another wave, 
we get all those overtones, otherwise uh, called harmonics. So that means that the, the sound cannot be built up um, using those waves, because then you have all the overtones to deal with. Um, for our purposes, that doesn't matter, because we want just a cool sound. We don't want it to be like the original. So I'm going to choose a saw wave. That's all right, it sounds pretty messy. So one thing I can do is set the pitch variation down. Um, then it's going to have a pure pitch, nothing analyzed from the audio file. It's going to sound a lot clearer already, and then we can mess with these controls some more. And of course, like anything in Alchemy, we can modulate that with an MSEG. I'll choose uh, some rhythm. I save a lot of these MSEG settings because I, I value my time, and <laughs> these take a lot of time to to make. So I modulate that odd even. Um, I decrease the amount a bit. Alright, something like that. We can set the pitch down a little bit. Minus one octave. And then we can use a filter to add some sort of a finishing touch. Um, choose a new MSCG, MSCG2 I haven't used yet and I'll choose a new rhythm uh, let's see something like that So it's just showing you the basic idea. Of course, we can make this a lot cooler. We can mess with this some more. We can uh, change the number of partials. Um, if you drag it to the left, it's going to make more of a simple sound. More to the right, it's going to add more partials, so more of a complex sound. I can add a wave shaper, a pretty aggressive effect, but also pretty cool. Um, I can add a distortion, and I particular I cannot say that word, I shouldn't try it. And I especially like the Excite and the Mac. Um, these work more with the higher, um, the higher harmonics, so it's going to sound a little bit brighter and more exciting, I guess. Right. Um, I already like that um, pretty much and then we can still use the um, virtual analog mode, add a little bit of a real saw in there, um, perhaps a detuned one. obvious thing to do would be to choose a more colorful filter like one of the MOOCs. I especially like to drive on those. Alright, that's pretty cool. Um, now what I want to do is because I want to show you multiple examples and I think seeing the time I'm just gonna go with two. But now I want to make this into an ambient sound. So let's uh, disable well, not the filter, but the modulation at least. Okay, that might be a bit bassy for an ambient sound, so I'm gonna set this up an octave, 12 semitones. That's a lot better already. Then we need to visit our um, amp or envelope, sorry. And if we do that, we go to envelope one, which is controlling the uh, volume right here, the main volume. Uh, we can see that it's controlled by something else, and that something else in this case are these performance controls. So I want to use the attack here instead. Okay, that's a bit more ambient. Um, I'm gonna mess with these harmonics again. We 
can add a little bit of pitch variation. If we hold shift, we can make fine adjustments like that. Um, I want to add a vibrato effect, so I'm going to choose an LFO and set it to the fine tuning. Also a very little amount. Wait, I'll first do an extreme amount so you can hear what it sounds like. Uh, a good, good speed for a vibrato would be around 6 or 7. So that's very extreme and then we'll decrease that. And we can delay and give it some attack so it's going to take a while for this effect to kick in. Um, and then it's going to modulate the fine tuning. Um, we can use multiple filters here and uh, use them in parallel mode so we can use them all alongside each other rather than in a chain. For the first one I can choose a bandpass. Um, for the second one I can use what you would do uh, a low pass. And I'm just doing this to add a bit of color, nothing, nothing fancy here. And we can modulate those very subtly with an LFO to get some movement in our sound, make it more of an expressive sound. If we use this smooth control right here, we um, make it even a little bit smoother. Um, I don't, I almost don't want you to hear that modulation there. Okay, what else can we do? Uh, we can use one of the uh, panning effects. Let's go for the spread. And we set the ramp, and the ramp is um, that means where it's gonna start to um, to to spread the the partials or the yeah the partials I guess. Um, so now if we set it to around thirty percent, it's not gonna do this with the low. Um, as you probably know from mixing class, you don't want the lows to be at the sides of the speakers all the time. So something like this would be fine. Uh, we can use these detuning effects similar to the ones that Razer uses. They're pretty extreme. Uh, probably not for our uh, for our case very good, um, but we can try it. This is something that would be great mapped to one of the performance controls. I'm gonna map it to performance control one. I'll give it a very very small depth right there and I'll give it a mod map and I'm not explaining all of the I do have a very very nice alchemy course that you can uh, check out um, just search for sound freaks alchemy course I'll, I'll explain the whole thing in a lot of depth um, so now of course what we need to do for our ambient sound is disable these damn wave shapers um, we have one acoustic reverb there already I'm gonna choose another reverb on another bus on bus A and that will be a convolution reverb. And now this control, this send control on the source, we can send that to um, on the left side to filter one, on the right side to effects bus A, which is this bus. And then at the end of this bus, we find um, this send, which automatically sends to the main effects. We do not want that. We want this to be the output. Otherwise, it's still gonna go here. And it's gonna go to all this stuff right here. So we don't want that. Um, I'm gonna choose a convolution type right here. And convolution reverbs is the same as uh, Space Desire. It uses an audio file to create reverb. And I'm gonna set the dry all the way down and then the wet up. And now this is going all the way to um, effects A, so we should only hear that convolution. And that rings out um, pretty long in a lot of cases. So I'm gonna choose one of these drone tones. And the good thing about these drone tones is that they have a pitch. Um, and the bad thing about these drone tones is that they have a pitch. You do not al always want that because it's not gonna be in, um, in tune with, with what you're playing, your MIDI. So there are a few ways around that. We can use the size. And the size decreases the size or increases the size of the audio file, uh, which changes the pitch, which is like a normal thing. All, all audio files behave that way. Um, so if, if we do this, if we set this to 50%. So I hope you can hear that effect. Um, if I make it 50%, it's gonna be uh, twice the pitch. If I make it 200%, it's gonna be um, half the pitch. 
that's one way. Um, it's not very precise though, so I'm gonna use something a little bit more fancy. I'm gonna choose a comb filter, which we can find in the filter section of this convolution reverb itself. And as you might know, a comb filter adds feedback. It delays the signal and then feeds it back into the filter again, creating some sort of tone for us. And that tone we can use as our melody. Um, still, that wouldn't be that wouldn't be playing in tune. So we need to um, we need to <laughs> I lost the word modulate that. We need to modulate that with uh, an envelope follower. So then it's listening to our MIDI input, and um, that's actually pretty cool because then we can make this whole thing sort of in pitch. And we have different types that we can choose from. Yeah, I like this one. And now we're going to go back a little bit to uh, on this knob and send the rest of it to um, our normal main output, where we can work on the reverb a little bit. And this acoustic reverb is really good. Um, some of the presets in here are pretty amazing. I almost wish that I could use this just in my mixes. So now we pretty successfully um, made some sort of ambient sound out of this. Um, we can still do a lot with the uh, modulating the harmonics and the fundamental, the octaves. And one thing that I might want to do is um, copy the source. Yeah. Let's just, that's okay, then, and then I'll really stop this tutorial. I'll copy this source and I'll paste it again in source B, paste source, and that's now going to be the exact same sound, except I'm going to change a few things. I'm going to click on the amp and I'm going to assign that a new AHDSR, um, and I'm going to give that a very short DK. So this is going to be more of a melodic sound. I'll, I'll solo this for a second. Um, I don't want to send this to the to the convolution reverb, so I'm going to send it all the way to filter one. Um, maybe I want to send it to filter two instead. Yeah, that's better. And then I'll use um, some sort of filter here with some sort of filter um, envelope. Gonna give it a lot of drive there. And we can send filter two to a new bus. Let's send that to bus B. And I'm just gonna use an amp here because this one is a little bit soft. So I want to raise the volume a little bit and just give it a, another reverb, why not? And a delay. Finally, turn up the pitch a bit. And then I have some um, melody in here, so now I can unmute that and um, we'll primarily hear that through our, um, through our source B, because that one has the, the short attack. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention, or I forgot to do actually, is I've set up this AHDSR on the amp, and that's now bypassing the other AHDSR, so we need to choose a new one here, right here. So 4 should be on the amp of A, and then the master envelope can have no envelope, or sorry, the master volume can have no envelope, because now we're controlling these volumes separately, um, with separate envelopes. If we don't do that, the sound will just continue uh, continue forever. So if, if we disable the master envelope, we need to enable envelopes right here. So that's it for this tutorial, I hope you learned something there and I'll, I'll see you in a next video. Thanks for watching guys.